Welcome back to learning how to use Web3.py. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to interact with the Ethereum blockchain in Python. So previously, we were able to connect to the Ethereum mainnet with an HTTP provider. So now we can use our Web3 instance to get information such as web3.eth.getBlock and we can get a block such as the latest. Then we can save this as the latest block and we can inspect the results of the latest block. So if you run this code cell, you can see information about the latest block. So you have a lot of properties here. You get an attribute dictionary. You can see the base fee per gas, the difficulty, extra data, gas limit, gas used, hash, logs bloom, the minor address, mix hash, the nonce, the number, the parent hash, the receipts root, the size, the state root, the timestamp, the transactions, part of the block. Okay, so there's quite a few transactions part of this one block on the chain. All right, so that gives us information about the latest block that was added to the blockchain at the time of running the code cell. Each block contains a reference to the block before it. That is the parent hash, and it's a hash of the previous block because all of the blocks are connected. All right, so with web3.py, you can get block data like this. You can sign and send transactions. You can deploy and interact with smart contracts and more. So next up, let's learn how to check an Ethereum address. Let's check if an address is valid. So for this, I'm going to create a new code cell and I'm going to use web3.is address and you can pass in an address here of a user or a wallet or a smart contract and we can save our results so we can print out the results by wrapping that in a print function. Okay, so this is a valid address. I got this address from Ganache, which is a local blockchain. But let's say you put in some other values into the address. Well, now that's no longer a valid address. Same thing, we could try changing some values. Okay, we still get false. So we have to have a valid address for this function to return true. Okay, otherwise we get false. What if we wanted to get the balance of a wallet? Okay, well, for that, we are going to take a wallet and pass or get its balance. So we can use web3.2 checksum address. This is going to make sure that the address is in the valid format. All right, and then we can save this as our wallet. Okay, then we can use web3.eth.getBalance and pass in the wallet. Okay, and we can print out the results so we can see how much ETH does that wallet have on our network. So this wallet has zero ETH because this wallet is from Ganache, which is a local blockchain, and we're accessing Web3 on the mainnet. So this wallet, maybe it has some test ether, Maybe it has some ETH on a different network, but it doesn't have any ETH on the main network, the real ether. All right, so in this case, we get a zero, and you can try this with other balances as well, other addresses. As well, there's a lot more functionality you can do in web3.py. For example, you can convert way to ether. So way comes from w3 dot from way. Way is the smallest denomination of Ether. It's like a penny to a dollar. So you can pass in a bunch of Way. It should be a large number because it's quite a small fraction of ETH. And then what you want to convert it to. So if you want to convert it to Ether, you pass in Ether. Then we can print out how much Ether is that much Way. So it's 111 Ethereum with decimals as well. Okay, so... That's another example of what you can do with Web3.py in terms of interacting with the blockchain. Coming up, we're going to learn how we can interact with a smart contract that is already on the blockchain. 
so don't miss the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.